Hey there, Angular folks, it's Brian, back again with, you guessed it, another signal forms example. Today, we'll be looking specifically at using custom validators in signal forms. We'll take an existing form component, like we've done in the past, and we'll convert it to signal forms, but this time, the form includes custom validation. We'll see how to handle this with signal forms, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by how easy it is. Okay, here's the form for today's example. It's pretty standard, just a username, email, and a submit button. Let's walk through the validation quickly so we can see what behavior we're going to replicate. When we click into the username field and blur out, we immediately get a required message letting us know we need to fill out this field. Then, when we type a special character, we get an invalid format message. If we replace this with a letter or number, now we get a length message. So we've got multiple validation rules layered here. Let's finish typing a valid username. Great, that error clears. Now notice how the button is still disabled. That's because the email field is still empty and therefore the overall form is invalid. Just like our username, when we click into the email field in Blur, we get a required message because the email is required. If we type an invalid email address, we get an invalid format message. But once we type a valid email in, the message goes away and the form becomes valid. So the button enables. So this is the behavior we'll need to replicate when we switch over to signal forms. Let's look at some code and walk through how this works before making any changes. This form is built using reactive forms. And we can see that right here in the template where we're binding the form element to our form using the form group directive. Then we're using the form get method to access the username field for logic within our template. This gives us a reference to the control itself without needing to declare it everywhere we use it. We then use this variable to determine whether or not we should show validation errors based on the touched or invalid status of the username control. So we only show errors if the user interacts. Next, the input is connected to the form using the form control name directive. We also apply a CSS class if the input should show an error. And below that, we conditionally render the username's error message using the get username error helper from the component. Below that, the email field mirrors almost the exact same structure. Same form get concept, same invalid and touch pattern, same form control name directive, same error class. But the error message logic is a little different. Here, we're using the has error function to display the correct message for this field. And at the bottom, if the form is invalid, we add the disabled attribute to the submit button. That's all there is to the template. Now let's take a look at the TypeScript. At the top, we have the sign up form interface used to strictly type our form. The controls are typed using form control, which pairs nicely with form group. After this, we have our custom validator for the username field. It returns nothing when the value is empty, leaving the required validation to the built in required validator. Then it checks if the input is a valid alphanumeric format. And if not, it creates a username in valid object with the message we want to show. Next, it validates that the length of the username is between 3 and 20 characters. If not, it provides a username invalid error again with the proper message. So that's our custom validator, and it's needed because there's no built in validator that checks both alphanumeric format and the length range we need here. Next, we can see the form group typed with our signup form interface, which creates the reactive form. Within this form group, we have our username control using the built-in required validator 
followed by our custom username validator. Then we have the email control, which uses both the built-in required and email validators to ensure the address is valid. Below that, we have the get username error function that parses the username controls errors and determines which message to show. That's our reactive form setup. It works, but it doesn't really play nicely with signals. So let's switch it over step by step. Before we start, it's important to note that this is an experimental API that uses signals for form state and validation. It's more reactive, more type safe, and integrates naturally with Angular's signal-based reactivity model. That said, it's not recommended for production just yet. It's mainly available for testing and feedback. The main difference for custom validators is how they're written and integrated. Okay, let's start migrating this form to the new API. The first thing we need to do is update our signup form interface. It's currently typed with form controls, but with signal forms, these will just be strings. Now we can remove the old form group and its controls. We won't be using those anymore. We can also remove the reactive forms module from the components imports array, and then remove all unused imports at the top of the file. With signal forms, we store the state of the form in a signal. So let's create a new signal name model, and we'll type it using our signup form interface. Then we'll initialize the username and email properties with empty strings. This will now be the source of truth for the form state. Next, we'll create the form itself. For this, we'll use the new form method from the signal forms API. This creates a reactive form signal wrapped around our model signal. Now, how do we add validation? Well, we do that right inside this function. Instead of passing validators to individual controls, we describe our form's validation inside a schema callback. To make a field required, we use the new required method from the signal forms module. We'll do the same for our email field. And then, to validate the format of the email, we'll use the new email method. Okay, now what about our custom username validation? Well, before we can use it, we need to make a couple of updates to our custom validator function. First, we need to update what we pass into this validator. It used to take a form control, but now it uses a field path from the signal forms module. A field path is just a type safe reference to a specific field in your form's model. Essentially, it lets us interact with that field programmatically. Next, we need to wrap all of this logic in the new validate function from signal forms. This function takes in the field and provides a validation context object that we can use to monitor the field's value. Now we just need to update how we handle the errors and messages. With signal forms, we use the new custom error function. This takes a kind property which identifies the error type and a message string to display. We'll use our username in valid kind for this rule. Then we need to do the same for the length rule. We need to add the custom error function and we'll use the same username in valid for the kind property. That's everything we need to change in our custom validator. Now we're ready to add it to our form. We just call the function and pass it the field, just like the built in validators. So now our form is configured to use the custom validator when validating logic. Next, let's update how we handle error messages. We'll replace the get username error function with a computed signal instead. Inside it, we'll first grab the errors array from the username field signal on the form. 
Then we'll check if there's a required error. If so, we return the required message. If not, we'll check for a username in valid error and return that message instead. Finally, we return an empty string as a catch-all if none of these match. We'll handle our email errors in the same way. We'll create a new computed signal. We'll grab the errors array from the email field. Check for required. Check for email and return the appropriate message for each. This keeps our error logic centralized and reactive. No need for complex template conditions, and honestly, I don't think there's a great way to do this in the template anyway. Finally, we'll import the new field directive from the SignalForms module in our components imports array so we can wire everything up in the template. This is what we'll use in place of the old form control name or form control directives. That's all we need to do here. Now let's switch over to the template. First, we can remove the form group binding since we're not using it anymore. Next, to access the username field, we'll use the form property to get the username signal. We'll also update the invalid and touched checks to use signals now. Next, we'll switch from the form control name directive to the new field directive and bind it to our form's username field. Everything else stays the same until we get to the email control. Here, we'll do the same updates. Switch to the email signal, switch to signals for invalid and touched, and use the field directive for the control. And in this case, we also need to simplify the error message to use our new get email error computed signal. Lastly, we'll update the disabled binding on the button to use signals too. Okay, that should be everything. Let's save and try it out. Everything looks the same, which is good. When we click in and blur the username field, we get the required error. Nice. If we type an invalid character, we get the alphanumeric error message. If the length isn't valid, we get the length error message. And once we enter a valid username, the error disappears completely. So the username validation works exactly as before, but now it's powered by our updated custom validator with signal forms. Pretty cool stuff, right? Now for the email validation, click into the field and blur. The required error still works. Enter an invalid email, that still works too. Then enter a valid email, the errors disappear, and the submit button enables because the form is now valid. Everything here is now running on signals, and that's pretty cool. So we just saw how custom validators work great in signal forms too. You write them almost the same way, just a few small syntax changes. If you've built custom validators before, they'll feel instantly familiar in signal forms. And that's definitely a good thing. If you enjoyed this, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really helps more Angular developers discover these tutorials. And hey, if you want to show some Angular pride, check out the Shieldworks tees and hoodies linked below. They're for those of us who code like it's a trade just like you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.